Amen. Amen. Okay. Come on, Mira. So today I have the privilege of doing a lesson with you guys on forgiveness. Mm. And not just forgiveness, but forgiveness from the heart. Mm. So we will be reading Matthew 18, 32 to 35. And since you guys all have it, but I see that some of you guys have your Bibles out. So if you can turn to Matthew 18, 32 to 35, it reads, Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat you, will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. So today, we're going to be focused on that part. What does it really mean to forgive from the heart? Mm -hmm. Have you ever found it difficult <clears throat> to forgive someone? Mm -hmm. To what extent are you willing to forgive? And what does it mean to forgive from the heart? Those are some questions that I had to ask myself because I personally struggle a lot with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness must be real, sincere, and not pretended, and not merely outward. There must not only be, uh, there must not only be outward act of, oh, there must not be an outward act of revenge, no malice in the heart, no storing up of evil passions for future outlet, uh, as occasions may arise. So no, you know, holding up to those mm -hmm. bad things in the for, to hold it against them in the future. Mm -hmm. The heart must be in harmony with the conduct, and both must evidence a true spirit of charity yeah. this alone enables one to continue in a state of grace and in reconciliation with god this alone makes prayer acceptable and we are assured that as our heavenly father requires us to forgive without limit so this mercy is infinite and we and will be extended to us to, in measure unabound, unbounded meaning that if god gives us endless mercy and forgives us endlessly it's the same is expected from us right okay. towards one another so tonight i have four simple points for you come on and they are very crucial to learning how to forgive from the heart mm -hmm. so point number one forgiveness is not optional mm -hmm. forgiveness is the most important lesson the most fundamentally most fundamentally if we do not forgive Simply, God does not forgive us, mm -hmm. right? Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14 to uh, 15, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. A more in-depth passage, as is mentioned in the previous one that I read, in which Jesus describes the man we call the merciless servant. This account shows God's righteous indignation towards us when we desire his forgiveness, but do not have the heart to pass it on to those who have hurt us. Yeah. A lack of forgiveness affects your relationships, right? Mm -hmm. It is a block or a wall, a barrier between us and God and between us and people. Mm -hmm. We will not be able to develop and maintain close and satisfying relationships with God and others. We are still human, we have to remember that we are still human yeah. and that we will hurt one another mm. no matter what, right? Mm. So knowing this and having a conviction for this is very important. Mm. Um, Peter preached, right? It says, love each other deeply. In, in 1 Peter 4, 8, it says, above all, mm. right? You know that's important. Yeah. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Yeah. Mm. If we do not forgive, we are left unhappy and unfulfilled. Something deep inside us nags away at our conscience if we are not graceful towards other people. I know it does for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a guilty ridden person. It definitely does. Of all the Christian graces, forgiveness surely stands near the, near the top of the list and is one of the hardest ones to do. Mm -hmm. So I know this firsthand because... In my discipling relationship with Carrie, uh, when I was in Sydney, when I first started being in the ministry, um, I wouldn't take the advice that she would give me as help. 
or as beneficial. I always saw her as my enemy, as being critical towards me, and it really affected my and disordered my view of her. And for a long time, our relationship was not mended, and I didn't fully give her my heart because I was just in the back of my mind. I was like, oh, she doesn't like me. She only likes this person better than she likes me. She's always comparing me to this person. And I failed to see the fact that she was only trying to help me mm-hmm. and build me up and really help me to grow spiritually. But in, for the longest time, our relationship didn't grow because I always had that block of unforgiveness for the things I thought she did to me mm-hmm. and the things that she said about me, which were not true. But for a long time, as I can remember, our relationship was not good because of me, because of my insecurities and because of my lack of forgiveness towards her. So my challenge to you is to ask yourself, do you view forgiveness as an option? Mm. Who in your life have you not fully forgiven? Is it yourself? Others who have hurt you? Is it God? Mm. It is time to open up your eyes and realize that forgiveness is not optional. Mm. Point number two, forgiveness is not easy. The Bible says, says that love keeps no record of wrongs. In 1 Corinthians 13, 5, Paul writes that love keeps no record of wrongs. Our lives have been affected deeply by our own sins and the sins of others against us. We simply must clear out the past by, by forgiving others and ourselves if we are to, be, to have a joyful and productive life. Another important thing is to remember, don't stuff it in. Many of us have not dealt with past hurts because We did not know how to deal with them and were afraid to face them. Mm -hmm. Most of us us are stuffers when it comes to really working through our attitudes towards those who have hurt us. We are people pleasers and conflict avoiders and we have learned to live with our quiet reservations rather than honestly facing them. Figuring out what needs to be forgiven, that's important. Mm -hmm an important step to forgiveness what needs to be forgiven (laughs) why are you hurt so this is the beginning point right get help from your your discipleship partner your discipler to identify anything from the past that you have not worked through and forgiven keep in mind that the purpose is not to give these hurts up once and for all keep in mind that the purpose is to give these hurts up up once and for all not simply to rehash them one more time Uh, right we need to let it out in order for us to gain true forgiveness we must understand what hurt us and what we felt Mm -hmm. we need to develop a spiritual perspective because if you're like me you don't have a spiritual perspective when you're hurt so we need to realize that satan is do is is doing what satan is doing to choke you emotionally Mm -hmm. you may be looking back at these hurts in your past with regrets self-hatred, blame shifting, or any one of a number of inappropriate responses. We have to come to grips with our perspectives in order to replace them with God's perspectives. Mm -hmm. Remember that we are sinners and we will hurt each other. A little thing about marriage. When you are really close to someone, and you can also relate when your siblings, with your parents, with, I don't know, (coughs) your best friend, you know, sometimes... When you're really close to somebody, you say some really hurtful things, mm-hmm. right? So in my relationship with Christopher, sometimes when we are discussing things, sometimes he can say very hurtful things, and so can I. And things turn around, and I get bitter when I take things very personally. Mm-hmm. And when I start confusing my emotions with truth, mm-hmm. right? Because in that moment when you're discussing or arguing, whatever, a lot of the things that you say, you don't really need. But the important thing is to identify that and to distinguish what is true and what is just mere emotion. So my challenge to you is get open about your bitterness. Realize that we are under attack by Satan and and most of the things that linger in our mind are often not even true. Mm -hmm. So getting open about them helps you be at peace. And sometimes when you just listen to yourself of the things that you say, you realize that some things that you are thinking about in your head are not that big of a deal mm-hmm. and sometimes they're not true. Yeah. And I'm a, I can testify to that all day long. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Come on, Meta. Point three, forgive as Jesus forgave you. 
In Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ forgave you. All disciples have been called to forgive as the Lord forgave you. So if you are a disciple, well, guess what? You are called to forgive, yeah. just as Christ forgave you. It is one thing to forgive those who have hurt you. Sorry. One of our best examples of such forgiveness surely must be the mother of Jesus, Mary. Mm -hmm. It is one thing to forgive those who have hurt you. And it is as much more difficult thing to forgive those who hurt the people closest to you or to your children, right? None of us have kids, so we can't really relate to that. But, you know, hurting anybody that's close to you. Yeah. Imagine the attitudes that Mary must have had to struggle with towards those who yelled mm -hmm. at her son, at her son's death, and who then delighted as he died. Mm -hmm. Yet she heard Jesus pray for their forgiveness, even as his body was wrapped with pain. And... She had to learn how to forgive as she had seen him do. Don't just forgive, but continue to love. Mary spent the rest of her life reaching out to those who had hated her son. Wow. It was as if she had a clean slate. What a tremendous challenge. I, for myself, am learning about that right now. She was characterized by grace. From the first time we meet her in, this, in scripture, and she no doubt finished her life filled with grace. Mm -hmm. she, uh, we have not only the example of Jesus to follow, but we also have the example of his mother to call us higher as women. Mm -hmm. With God's help, let us learn to forgive as, as we have been forgiven. An example of that is, again, myself and my husband. Uh, Christopher and I had, have had an awesome relationship. But in our relationship, we have had a lot of difficulties, uh, especially coming from me because I struggle a lot with trust. And in our relationship, you know, I, I failed to acknowledge him for who he is and created my own story in my head of who I think he is. Mm -hmm. And I continuously used that against him over and over and over and over again. And every little argument that we get into, somehow I bring it up or somehow it's about the same thing and for me it was really hard to forgive what I thought he did to me or what he actually did to me in the past and if I'm honest it's something that I'm still struggling with and I'm still trying to battle through so this lesson was for me <laughs> um, and you know start with the clean slate like Mary did and not only forgive but start with that clean slate and no longer remember any of that or ever bring it up my challenge to you guys is we are all called to forgive as disciples. Don't just forgive the people that hurt you, but continue your relationship with a clean slate. Mm. Point number four, what are some signs of an unforgiving heart? We know when certain hurts still reign over our hearts, when we are consumed with the idea of it occurring again. We are not free and our judgment of the truth is clouded. For one, we become anxious. We're continuously thinking about it. Your mind is not at peace holding it within your heart. Mm -hmm. You dread being uh, being about you dread being around people who remind you of the hurt or you dread being around the people who have caused you hurt. You live in fear. You anticipate it happening again. You set yourself up for failure instead of trusting God. And you find somehow ways to always bring it up. Any topic of conversation, it comes up. The next time you have a disagreement or conflict, you bring it up. You continue to lord it over the person that hurt you, reminding them of the way of what they have done. Another thing, you use it as an excuse. You justify your sin as a result of your hurt, and you blame it on the fact that you haven't. You blame it on the fact that you haven't changed. Um, again, I say this because I wrote this for me. I wrote it for me for many different reasons. I've had to forgive myself and people over the years uh, for some reasonable reasons that actually did happen and for others created in my mind. I had to think about myself with this, with this point 
I know that in my own experience, it is really hard to forgive, especially if you feel entitled to feel the way that you feel, whether it's towards yourself or towards other people. But you, we have to keep in mind that no one is exempt from getting hurt. Yeah. And also that no one is exempt from receiving forgiveness. Just as much as we feel like that person deserves it, they, maybe they do, but it is not our role to take that, that role from God of right. vengeance. Um, so my challenge to you for this point is look over this list and ask yourself, is this you? Mm. Do you still find yourself acting or reacting in such a way? Mm. And I'm going a little quick. I'm really talking really fast. But my last and final point. Come on, Mayra. Forgiveness is a decision. Yeah. If you go to Matthew 5, verses 23 to 24, it says... So if you are about to offer, so if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Go at once and make peace with your brother, and then come back and offer your gift to God. In our hearts, if our hearts are to be freed through forgiveness, we have to make the decision to forgive by taking action and dealing righteously with our past. We can do this by following the five steps, which spell out trust. Uh, yes, step number one, take responsibility. We need to take responsibility for our own sins by confessing them to God and to others, as it, sa as it says in James 5.16. Sometimes we were the sinner who caused our own pain. Other times, others sinned against us, but we sinned in response by keeping a record of wrongs. Mm -hmm. With some accompanying simple attitudes of bitterness, hate, and resentment. Yes, record of wrongs is a sin, and it is unloving. Step two, respond in prayer. Many people pay big bucks for professional counseling, who only get them in touch with the origin of their emotional pain. Only God can heal us. Yeah. We have to pray long enough and deeply enough to work completely through our pain, our anger, our fears, and sins before the healing can take place. Mm. Come on, Ben out. Leanne Curtin once said, when you confess your sin, you have to throw it all up. And only then you feel better. Throwing it bit by bit only prolongs your pain. Mm. Mm. Step three, understand that God is the judge, not you. God will judge and punish the people who have hurt us. We have to place the proper responsibility on the ones who sinned against us, but we cannot be bitter and vengeful. Vengeance, as it says in Romans 12, 19, is God's business, not ours. Trust also that God loves that person more than you do and wants them to repent. Step four, surrender the pain. This is an emotional decision that it that is reached through the surrender process described. Once reached, you cannot allow yourself to continue thinking about these hurts. Be done with it once and for all. When Jesus followed this path in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was ready to face even the cross with a peace-filled heart. We can do the same. Hurt has many stages, and one of the first stages is the critical stage we have to make a decision. Do we want to be healed, or do we want to go on suffering from an unfair hurt lodged in our memory? And final, final step, thank God. Mm. We need to thank God that our sins have been forgiven, and therefore we are freed up to forgive those who sinned against us. Praise God for the cross. Be thankful for the good things, even about the past, because those who have hurt us probably also did some things which were good. So yeah. looking at the bad and the good, not just the bad. Be thankful for the lessons you have learned and can learn from a painful past. Now you are in a position to help others learn what you have learned with your new spiritual perspective. Be thankful for your new found freedom as you have learned to forgive record of wrongs. 
right? Because it's a wrong. Be thankful that Jesus understands our pain and stands ready to help us work through it, as it says in Hebrews 2 and 4. In my relationships closest to me, I've had, I have had to apply this process over and over and over and over again. Hmm. And the only way you know you have truly forgiven is when you can either talk about it, talk about the problem without having without it having any effect on you, or where it no longer comes up in your current con conflicts, like you no longer bring it up, or even in your topic of conversation as a current hurt. That's when you know when you have truly forgiven. Sisters, read over these five steps. See what God is doing in your life and choose to be free. Go through these five steps and apply it to your life. Mm. And in conclusion, let's make a decision to forgive from the heart, not allowing our bitterness to get in the way in our relationship with God and with other and with one another. We remember that forgiveness is not optional. Forgiveness is not easy. We have to forgive as Jesus forgave us. And we have to keep in mind what makes us have an unforgiving heart or mm -hmm. how we know we have an unforgiving heart. Mm -hmm. And again, remembering that everything in this life, most of the time is a decision. Yeah. So it is our decision to do what it takes to really be, be real, be sincere, not pretend, and not let it just be an outward forgiveness so that people can see you but also an inward forgiveness so that you can have peace. Yeah. Thank you. Yay!